Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Spoiler in Time. It's our lucky episode 13. And on this uh, death defying, I think is the word I'm looking for, episode of Spoiler in Time, we are going to talk about the Rick and Morty cartoons on Adult Swim. We watched all of them we could get our hands on. We're going to talk about the most recent episode of Cosmos, where they talked about the universe. We're going to talk about the most recent episode of Archer. And if that weren't enough, I am continuing my The Shield adventure with episode five. Yeah, Where should man. we start, Brian? Wait, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, we don't want to spoil the shit. I say let's start with the co- uh, Cosmos, right? Cosmos That's the is spoiler. the easiest one because you're not really spoiling the fact that the universe exists. Right. Uh, I'm going to go first and say I still have the last 10 minutes of Cosmos to watch. I think this might far and away be my favorite one so far. It you know de- what? It dealt with real mysteries to me. It dealt with issues that I understand the rote answers for, but very much valued the, um, the, the, the highly visual representation of those problems. I liked the fact that they unabashedly start, you know, b- before the opening credits, they started full on with the cartoon and set up that narrative. The idea that the sky is filled with ghosts, the idea that everything we see is in some way a lie I loved it. I, it was one of those transformative aha moments. It's the closest experience I've had yet to watching the original series. I think you're right. It is my favorite episode for sure. I, uh, the cartoon bothered me less. It still bugs me a little bit, but I thought it was used well this time. Uh, they kept it in little short bits. I love this topic. It's one of my favorite topics, You know, the evolution of the cosmos. There are certain places where I wanted them to get into more detail, but I also totally understand why they didn't and probably couldn't. Uh, so, so that's a fine line that they're walking that I'm okay with. And I felt like this is, this is one of those episodes where you can really blow people's minds. And even though they brought the calendar shtick back and at first I'm like, Oh, I liked the it calendar this time. again. I it liked still it. Worked. Yeah. it worked really well. Yeah. You know what? Another thing they did is, and, and again, uh, some, somebody sent an email saying like the cartoons that Brian's always railing against. I don't think I, I don't hate them. I just, I just don't resonate with them as well as everything else, especially I felt it during this episode because as they told the story of all the people in minds that led up to Einstein's uh, realization of, 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 you know, special relativity and so on, uh, they acted him out with real actors. Now, granted, they didn't have any speaking lines. I think that's the idea. Idea is that if it's going to be narrative, you can recreate as long as it's window dressing to show you what it might have looked like, give or take. But if you're telling a story, it's got to be in cartoon format. I haven't figured that out. But I rather liked that little recreation, those little vignettes of somebody pretending to be, um, you know, a, a Faraday or, or mm-hmm. Einstein or whoever yeah. else. And I like the, uh, the fact that they don't use the person that you expect as the focus of these episodes. This this could have easily been an Einstein episode, right? Sure. They could have just totally focused on Einstein. We, but we all know about Einstein. And of course, they weren't remiss. They, they acknowledge Einstein and his important contribution, right? Fundamental contribution. But I like that they used Herschel. because And, and they've done this in, in a couple of these episodes where they're like, actually, yeah, okay, Isaac Newton, but Let's talk about a let's talk about a different scientist that maybe you haven't heard that is very important to understanding this topic. I still feel the show lacks poetry. Uh, and that's the best way that I can put it, because this was an episode where I'm like, yes, I cannot find a logical, fundamental flaw with this episode. I like the way they presented it. I like what they did. They had one minor snide remark about religion but well, was, and, and not spe- and not just in religion in general they're very clearly poking just the young earth creationists that say that the world is six thousand yeah. seven thousand years old and and, and again, i was like i don't think there's that many people who believe that but okay there are some people whatever i just feel like this show doesn't move me as much and i don't know if that's just sentimental sentimentality I don't Almost know that certainly. If- I, I got to imagine because understand as adults, you know, 20, 30 years after the publishing of the original Cosmos, uh, part of what made it amazing to us the first go round was hearing these ideas for the first time. And that's what's mind blowing. And in that regard, they are. They're telling many of the same ideas and updated. So in that regard, uh, you know, someone like like my daughter is going to have the mind-blowing experience that you and I remember as a kid. So I, I, I almost want to handicap our judgment of it yeah, maybe. because we have two things. First of all, you can never go back and experience learning these things for the first time. Second of all, we've had 30 years of hero worship behind Carl Sagan behind us. So there's no, it's, it's no, there's no way you and I are being fair about this at all. However, all that being said, 
uh, on this series, this episode, to be honest, is probably the first one I would show someone to say this is what the show's capable of. And I felt like this is the show they should have led with because it eases you into it. Everybody loves to hear about like the the uh, relativity and the exploding universe and the all of that stuff. That's 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 kind of the mind blowing stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and and I think what they were trying to do is like, well, we'll start with the things that relate to being human first because these are the least human. And maybe because I'm not human, I prefer this topic. I don't. Know. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say about it, but you were saying that certainly nothing shocking that I missed in the last 10 minutes. I'll go back and watch it. I don't remember exactly what happened in the last 10 minutes, but no, there was not some. I, what I can tell you for sure, there was no point in the last 10 minutes where I like, whoa, this whole episode just changed. Like it, it pretty much carries on where you think it's going. All right, let's real quick. Not a lot to say about Archer. Obviously, new episode coming out tonight. Uh, this episode was sort of like a non starter for me. It was, again, I never regret watching Archer, but like, I can't tell you what happened outside of they all stood around complaining about how they're not very good at their jobs. It felt like a clip show, right? Well, it, it, even it though had it the wasn't. same structure as a clip show, even though it wasn't a clip show, right? Because it was them standing around reminiscing, like, and then tell me more of the story of what happened. Like it all started when we landed the plane, and the, well, you know. Yeah. And, and again, like the fact that clearly everyone turns out OK. I mean, again, I don't watch Archer for its dramatic tension, but I do feel like it might have benefited from not knowing how everything's going to turn out at the end. And at the, at the end of the day, like I'm still waiting on Shirlene's country music career to go anywhere. And I'm still waiting. And now they're like, OK, now we're not Coke dealers. Now we're arm dealers. And I'm just like, ah, I don't I don't I don't know. I I, I, the fundamentals, like, I like that, like, how long are we going to go with this cocaine joke? Oh, now they're arms dealers. That actually fits a little better. Okay. You know, that keeps it a little more interesting. I don't, yeah, I feel I'm 50 50 on the Charlene thing. Like, I would like to see that play out, but I feel like that is coming. So I'm not too worried about well, and it. And plus, also, there's, again, and it feels so weird to say this. We already know from from the future reminiscing that that she's going to hit, like, number one on the charts. So this is a given fact. Oh, and, they like, told you couldn't us, have predicted that on your own? No, no, no. Okay, but, but again, but again I mean, I mean, first of all, with it being Archer, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if you started the Charlene narrative and it ended with her, you know, giving sexual favors for money in a back alley somewhere with it being the worst decision she's ever made in her entire life. Well, and it might still. I mean, well, okay. I mean, it might, but it is Archer. I still know that along the way she'll hit number one because they made sure to shout that out. You know, the first episode. You I need I, to let it let it go. I do. I, there's let a lot of things I clearly need to let go. <laughs> if I can quote Jeff Kanata. Yeah. I, um, uh, yeah. I don't have anything else to say about Archer either. It was not the. It's not a horrible episode. I'm, I'm not trashing it or anything, but it did feel a little like it was getting us from from last week to next week. Yeah. Um, just kind of like, oh, we need to resolve that Columbia storyline. So here we go. I do think that the Rick and Morty series has a lot of good science. So if you like Cosmos <laughs> and you like dirty cartoons like Archer, it's kind of like mathematics that you're going to like Rick and Morty. Sure. Uh, although I love the, the the lip service they give to everything. The fact that everyone's clearly made of rubber and that, uh, and that no problem can't be fixed by the waving of hands. Uh, man, and I mentioned this earlier, very weird for me to start off so annoyed by the over the top being gross for gross sake stuff. And then eventually just sort of you become inured to it. And I wonder if that's something to that they feel like is necessary to capture the 15 year olds in the audience or what? Maybe like the, the fact that he's always got a little like something slobber, flowing yeah. to slobber flown out of his chin. He's burping a lot. That feels like, oh, we need to. We need to appeal to the younger folks. But it's kind of weird eyes. because, like, I hated it the first two episodes. And near the end, I was like, why don't I mind this anymore? I never got used to the spittle on the chin. That still bugs me. But the, the burping sort of, uh, let me, that, that's what I got totally used to. And it definitely reminds me of Doc Brown. I feel like oh, it's sure. a joke on Doc Brown where, like, what makes Doc Brown talk like that? Because he's constantly got indigestion. Yeah, well, and is drunk uh, at all and times. And is drunk, right. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. But I, I do love the dynamic of Rick and Morty, the sort of like brilliant scientist who can basically do anything, just to ask him, and if he's not too bothered, he'll make it happen. Uh, and the grandson who's like got all the morals and is actually not very smart, and they don't they don't hide that fact. No one's trying to pretend he is. Yeah. Rick just is like, yeah, I just like hanging around with him. The uh, I'll tell you, uh, Chris Parnell, uh, by the way, who's also in Archer, uh, plays the the dad right. in that. Like the dad, very quickly became one of my favorite characters. Did you to notice watch. he's not credited in the post roll credits? He's only in the in the pre roll credits. 
I did not notice that. Well, what's weird I, is the stuff I see in the post roll credits, like it'll say Dan Harmon was in it. I was like, wait, what? And I go yeah. to IMDb and you're like, yeah, he was the second guard. Or it's like a, like a, a Rob Schrauber. And again, this is because I'm super into the Harmontown podcast. I know a lot of these guys. And it was weird listening to that podcast as Rick and Morty was being developed and, and, uh, and to see there are brief moments when very clearly it's as though somebody had a tape recorder in the room listening to Dan Harmon talk complete with his stammering and these bizarre ideas coming in. Um, like one of my favorite moments that, that was very Dan Harmon was at the end of Anatomy Park after the credits when he's in the conference call. The way they recreated the conference call and it was and it was this bastardization of compromise where it's all that... Um, that, that group think speak of like, well, they're feeling here is that, you know, it's just not testing and we need to blah. And he just hangs up and he's like compromise park. Uh, loved all of that. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I loved all of these, these episodes, even the pilot, which I, I agree with you was kind of stiff and a little over the top, but I watched it later so that I could see the parts that I had already learned to like still in that episode a little bit and i i'm hungry for more i i, I guess there's, i think they're still airing right le, yes yeah look it back on it man there's some all right let's just real quick some of some of the highlights i think the whole idea of the meeseeks thing was brilliant uh Hi, mr meeseeks look at me and the fact that they never abandoned that trope right like yeah. when there's 30 of them they're still each one every time they say anything like in a huge debate yes i'm mr meeseeks look at me and i think what we need to do like like, like robert's rules of introduction yeah. and so on and and that was the same one where they did the jack and the beanstalk thing that had like the 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 mr jellybean rape scene in oh the yeah eye. and who ends up being the king it was so Whoa. dark man yeah real dark it was i can't like it's Again, like maybe that's a good point that you get people used to burping and spittle on faces, so you got to ramp things up to where you could swallow that episode because that's although it does, it, there's a line right. They don't show anything. It doesn't. It's, a, it's it is on television after all, so they they pull back if anybody's listening who hasn't seen it. Yeah, it isn't quite as bad as we just made it sound, but it gets right up to that line. Yeah, uh, Gatorwag in the chat is saying the Inception episode was very Dan Harmon. That stuff was straight taken out of a Harmontown rant, uh, which I believe, which I love that, especially that moment when it's clearly Freddy Krueger and they're like, oh, it looks like a copyright free version of an 80s horror icon with only has swords on his hands instead it's of It's a nine. legally safe version of an 80s horror icon. Yeah. No, and then so sometimes at the end, they'll do like a wink and a nod thing where they'll clearly, they'll deconstruct the show as it just happened. I, I, I like all of that. I do, too. All right. Shall we finish up with my uh, venture into the shield episode five? Yeah. And keep in mind, it's also my venture into remembering what happened on the shield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what happened yeah, yeah, on yeah, episode no, five? Uh, so this is a Vic Mackey production. This this is all this is all about Vic. Uh, and he is he is in control. Remember, I liked episode four because we saw him losing control. This is him regaining control. Uh, they, they go and they do a coke bust. And he decides that, you know, he, he works hard for the money. Uh, also, this is the one where we learn about his child getting autism. He's going to need a little money. So he plans that, like, we'll take, you know, we'll, of the six bricks when we bust the Armenians, four will go to, to the charge, you know, to the evidence room, and two will go with us. And then the, uh, the one... Julian. Uh, Julian the gay cop, sees him, right? Who doesn't want to admit he's gay yet, although that's a sidebar in the story, sees it happen. Uh, and reports it to Acevedo, who then tries to bust them. And it's all it's all a comedy of errors in a way, except not comedy in any way. It's a tragedy of errors in that they're able to get away and show like, no, it was the weapons that we were after. And here they are. And they and they they get away with the coke. It it this episode for me felt like a slide back into, yes, this is now a police procedural again. And yes, Vic is, you know, is, is he's not invulnerable because we, we learn about his kid's autism, but. I feel like it's still pieces being put on the table. It still feels very first season. I am I am seeing a cop show that I have seen before since then, uh, and it's not. It didn't surprise me in this particular episode. So for you, it was just sort of um, uh, like like I don't know this backslid on your enthusiasm for it. I guess it didn't. It didn't actually. My enthusiasm's still good for it, but this didn't advance it. Like I am. I'm desperately waiting. And I'm not trying to fake it. I'm waiting for that moment where I go, oh, now this is getting good. Yeah. Right. And this this ep and last episode, I started to see a little bit of hint hints of that, uh, because what's good is Vic Mackey shouldn't always win. Right. 
You right. know, like there needs to be that that tension, that conflict in the surprising ways in which his story takes a turn, because I think I know where it's going and I don't want it to go there because that would be boring. This episode, Vic Mackey's story went where I always think it's going to go. Uh, and and so that I was like, all right, we're still laying that foundation. That's OK. If I get six more of those kinds of episodes, then I'm going to start to get bored. Yeah. Well, and again, like if your purpose is to be surprised by a massive failure, you have to set up like, you know, if it's going to be an upset when the Bulls right. lose, you have to see the Bulls win a lot. Right. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, I, get, I get that. So, you know, and I, we did have the little bit of a twist, although you sort of see it coming uh, where Vic shows up to comfort the I can't remember her name. Uh, Which one? The cop. The, the cop chick? The, yeah. He's, she's studying for the sergeant's exam. Yeah, with the that's right. And then he, he leaves, and then Vic shows up, and they start making out. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I man. Okay, just keep on going. I'm glad you're sticking with it, because I'm Yeah, I'm, I'm committed to, see- to watching at least one every week. I, I, I want to I wanna get consistent about this. Fundamentals, you know, just laying down a bunt. Yeah. Moving the runner over. Right on, man. Well, I guess that's it for Spoiler in Time. Thank you to all our patrons who are getting early access to Spoiler in Time. And uh, next week, I guess, more of the same, right? Is there anything we want to jump on that we haven't watched yet? Uh, Well, I'm sure we'll both watch Cosmos and Archer. I'm pretty Um, sure we'll both end up seeing Captain America, I would assume. That's a good question. I'll try. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I should because it's my movie, but... um... (laughs) Yeah, yeah that, I might, that, I might make that happen. I, I'll, I'll try to take the kids. All right. Yeah, me too. Cool. Done. Thanks, everybody. Bye.